In the previous video, we've prepared our container bundle. We have both the runtime spec config file and the root file system. This is enough to start a new container with the help of the runc. Let's give it a try. To run the container, we need to use the runc run command followed by the container name. Runc run is much simpler than docker run. It doesn't accept thousands of arguments for volumes, environment variables, and so on. We will get an error. That's because our config file tries to bind a reserved port, which is every port under 1024. Only root can do that by default. We could either run the container with sudo, adjust our runtime specification, or modify the Apache configuration to listen on a different port. Let's do the later. I'm opening the Apache config file inside the container bundle and change the port from 80 to 8091. Now start the container again. There are lots of different warnings in the log, but the HTTPD is running just fine. We can confirm that by running curl localhost 8091 in a separate terminal tab, or by opening this address in the browser. Congratulations, you've created your first completely dockerless container. And while that for sure is not the easiest way to start a container, at least we know all the lower level details about how it works. Now let's examine a few more things about Runcy. The first thing that you might have noticed is that Runcy container is attached to the terminal. It's good in certain scenarios, but certainly not the way we would run a container in production. By default, Runcy runs in the foreground mode, which also means it's a direct child of our shelled session. Confirm it by running ps minus minus forest minus x. You see that the runc is a child of the shell and httpd is nested there as well. Let's kill our container and this time run it with minus minus detach option. We get this error because our runtime config has an option terminal set to true. Runc can't attach container to the terminal if the container is detached. Set the terminal option to false inside the config and try again. If we check the process table now, we will see that there is no direct parent of the container. It also means that there is no runc daemon to track this container. Instead, runc stores a simple JSON file with the container state in slash run slash user slash your user id slash runc slash container name slash state.json. This file has the container process ID and different information about the container. This state file also allows us to run different commands on the existing container. For example, we can run runc exit test who am I. This will give us root, meaning that inside container the user is indeed the root one. We can also enter the container with runc exit minus minus tty test sh if you want to. In the next video, we will discuss the applications of RunC and where it is useful. Do you think your project infrastructure is well set and maintained? We know for sure there is always room for improvement. If you are uncertain where to begin, let's first do an audit of what you already have. We will review your setup from every angle, performance, cost, security, high availability, automation, and provide you with a detailed roadmap of which direction your infrastructure should go, generate concrete tasks for you to implement, or even take on your infra entirely, if you let us, of course.